Scientists have pieced together huge new details about structures hidden below Earth's surface. Here's what you need to know. A massive subterranean tree moving lava up to the Earth's surface could, in millions of years, cause the disintegration of Africa, according to a study in the Nature Geoscience Journal. Quantum Magazine explains that most often volcanoes' existences are explained by tectonic plate boundaries interacting with each other in a variety of different directions. However, mantle plumes, defined by Science Daily as upwellings of abnormally hot rock within the Earth's mantle, can also form volcanoes as tectonic plates pass over them like marshmallows over a campfire. And the new study fills in previously simplistic ideas about plumes via the aforementioned subterranean tree, which extends 3,000 kilometers between East Africa and Réunion, a French island in the western Indian Ocean. This plume may have already spent 120 million years dragging Australia away from India and Antarctica, Madagascar from Africa, and the Seychelles from India. But the new map of its branches suggests it could one day contribute to East Africa splitting off from the rest of the continent and, beyond that, produce cataclysmic eruptions from below South Africa that have apocalyptic consequences. The study actually adds brilliant detail to the theory of plumes that has been decades in the making. Hawaii, an archipelago made up of giant volcanoes despite the fact that it's not on any plate boundary, initially put scientists onto the fact that the interaction of tectonic plates could not fully account for the existence of volcanoes, according to Quanta magazine, with geophysicist John Tuzo Wilson speculating in 1963 that volcanic chains like these were made by tectonic plates drifting over stationary hotspots in the Earth's mantle. Then, in 1971, geophysicist William Jason Morgan suggested that these hot spots were caused by plumes of particularly hot material rising from the lower mantle. And from there, geophysicists calculated that plumes are around 200 degrees Celsius hotter than the standard parts of the Earth's mantle, and that when they reach the bottom of tectonic plates, their heat melts their surroundings, creating magma. They also even figured out that plumes can carry mantle material upwards, which feeds extra magma into the crust, which combines with the previous effect to explain most intraplate volcanoes. To help fill in the bones of that theory with an actual 3D model of one plume, the giant subterranean tree, which starts 2,900 kilometers below the Earth's surface, scientists use measurements of seismic waves emanating from earthquakes, working with the fact that as those waves pass through geologic bodies, those bodies alter the wave's speed and trajectory. Interestingly, this technique was used previously to discover two giant blobs, chemically distinct from the rocks that surround them, within the Earth's mantle, and many of the superheated plumes we've been discussing here today are believed to be rooted to these blobs, suggesting they play some kind of role in their formation, according to one geophysicist who spoke to Quanta magazine. The origin of the blobs themselves is still contested, with some labeling them as defunct tectonic plate slabs and others labeling them as the dissected corpse of Thea, a Mars-sized planet that collided with the early Earth, resulting in the creation of the Moon. Some scientists now even believe that Earth and Thea collided twice, one hit-and-run incident followed by a second total wipeout that formed the Moon. But whatever their origin, the result is that we've now got giant plumes sprouting out of them causing volcanic activity, and we're living the evidence of them even if we can't see them. In Hawaii right now, for instance, Kilauea, one of the most active volcanoes in the world, is erupting again, having been promising to do so for some time. In August, scientists monitoring it raised alert levels in response to a series of earthquakes and ground swelling at the site, which can be an indication that it will soon expel lava. Though the chances of an eruption then appeared to recede, the Hawaii Tribune reports that Kilauea eventually did begin to erupt on September 29th, sustaining lava fountain heights of 10 to 15 meters this Tuesday, with some lava rising to heights of up to 30 meters, according to the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. Obviously, no one's that worried about any of this because it's all pretty familiar territory for our planet. For the most part, the fact that Kilauea erupts so often makes it easier to deal with than less predictable phenomena. So its regular eruptions are more like quirks than disasters. In December, Kilauea erupted at the crater, creating a lava lake containing enough lava to fill 10 Hoover dams. But the videos of Kilauea's eruptions make it look more like a slow-rising bubble bath than the end of the world. The slow creep of the giant subterranean tree that will eventually swallow South Africa probably fits into that kind of category too. Alongside the fact that the Earth's crust is warping incrementally, millimeter by millimeter, because of the new ice we've melted, and the fact that Earth's core is growing lopsided because more heat is being released on one side than the other. 
In the urgency stakes, it's certainly not to be put alongside the fact that Antarctica is at the risk of a chain reaction collapse, or the fact that thinning ice melange, the glue that holds ice sheets together, means scientists believe we might have to revise up our estimates of how quickly ice melting is going to reach catastrophic levels. Many scientists believe that the moon formed when a Mars-sized planet called Theia struck Earth around 4.5 billion years ago. Now, a team of scientists theorize that Theia's remains are what formed two mysterious continent-sized blobs of rock buried deep in Earth's mantle. For decades, seismologists have puzzled over these two blobs, which sit below West Africa and the Pacific Ocean, and straddle Earth's core like a pair of headphones. Up to 1,000 kilometers tall and several times that wide, they are the largest thing in Earth's mantle, says Qian Yuan, a PhD student in geodynamics at Arizona State University. Seismic waves from earthquakes abruptly slow down when they pass through the layers, which suggests they are denser and chemically different from the surrounding mantle rock. These blobs might simply have crystallized out of the depths of Earth's primordial magma ocean. But based on new isotopic evidence and modeling, Yuan believes the blobs are the guts of the theoretical alien impactor planet. The study is currently under review. Earth's inner core grows one millimeter in radius per year, but its east side, beneath Indonesia, is growing faster than its west, beneath Brazil, because it is cooling at a faster rate, causing more iron crystals to form, according to a study in Nature Geoscience. The conversation explains that when Earth was formed, a lot of heat was captured within the planet, and as this has slowly escaped, the inner core's temperature has dropped below the melting point of iron, causing the formation of the crystals. Because of lower temperatures around the east side, iron crystals form more quickly. However, Earth's spherical shape is maintained by constant spinning and the force of gravity, which redistribute the extra mass evenly according to popular mechanics. To establish the disparity, scientists combined the fact that seismic waves travel much faster from north to south through the core than from side to side, with estimates of how iron alloys behave at high pressure according to the conversation. Popular mechanics attributes the disparity to Indonesia being covered by a mix of islands and expansive sea floor, which is a key place for heat to be shed. The study's lead author said cold tectonic plates diving below Earth's surface may be a cause. Heat loss in Earth's inner core is important because it drives the flow of liquid iron in the outer core, which in turn creates Earth's magnetic field. According to the conversation, in billions of years, cooling will lead to the whole core to become solid, which will leave Earth without its protective magnetic field and leave us exposed to solar and cosmic radiation. One question the study brings up is if lopsided cooling in the core could already be affecting the strength of Earth's magnetic field. We already know from the ESA that Earth's magnetic field has lost 9% of its strength over the last two centuries. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.